This is the leftover poached chicken. Um, we've had our dinner and I think the key thing, you know, I'm using an organic free range chicken which was quite expensive so think about portion control. You don't have to demolish a whole chicken for a family of four, especially the way I'm trying to teach you how to cook because uh, we can make food go further, especially meat. So just very, it's quite obvious I suppose how to take the meat off the bone but basically I've used half a leg and one breast for two adults and one child. Um, it's significantly cooled down. I personally don't eat the skin because it's just fat. So we're going to slide that off. Now this chicken is going to be used to make my pasties tomorrow. So if you wanted to use most of the breast meat um, when you're serving your poached chicken dinner, that's absolutely fine because the brown meat is great for doing these pasties. Now there's the wishbone. She's <laughs> daughter's right on cue for the wishbone. Here we go. Ah. Go on, Liv's. Oh, a bit slippy. Here we go, go on, pull it this way. That's the wishbone, um, and I lost again. <laughs> How's that happen? Right, regarding the legs, you literally slide off a leg like so. Skim. I've made my wish. Very good. And the meat, if it's been poached for long enough, it literally slides off and you know I said the lemon was optional in this recipe but I really really smell the lemon it's beautiful so I'm just taking all the meat off the bone and there's plenty and I bought two packets of puff pastry because I did say in the shopping list one or two packs but I know there's going to be enough chicken for up for this family to make two lots and I'll probably freeze um, one lot of pasties before they're cooked so if you were cooking this as a single person and you've used a small chicken and you think this chicken's going to last forever, what you can do is you can have the pie mix, which is basically the sauce um, with chicken in and vegetables. It can be frozen at that stage. And that chicken, actually that chicken pie filling, you could eat it with rice or pasta, probably more with rice. It would be really, really delicious. So whether you put it in puff pastry or whether you just, um, you know, have it as a, a normal chicken sauce, it'd be beautiful. Just very quick, coming back here, looking on the back of the chicken, which is the other side to the breasts. One's come off, but can you see that little indentation there? This is called the oyster. And it's supposed to be, this little oyster shaped piece of meat, it's supposed to be the most tasty piece on the, uh, of the chicken. So all that's left in here is basically the chicken carcass and a bit of skin that we're not gonna eat. And on this plate here, there's about three or 400 grams of a very lean chicken which I cannot wait to turn into pasties tomorrow. I'm gonna to talk about the stock now. I'll just very quickly wash my hands. The stock, which is basically what the chicken was cooked in, is a really important part of tomorrow's recipe, which is, um, <clears throat> it's basically a white sauce, but instead of using milk, we're gonna be using this stock, and the fran fancy French name for it is velouté. Um, but this has got all the flavour in if you think it's got the garlic, the carrots, the bay leaf, peppercorns, um, the chicken was obviously cooked in here, the onion, wine I can smell as well, and the lemon. Um, this is going to be strained when it's a little bit cooler. I'm literally just going to put it through a sieve and then um, find some room in the fridge for it. So yeah, tomorrow this, um, this stock will be used to make my sauce. If it's quite fatty, what you can do is get a large spoon or a ladle and you literally sit it on top of the um, stock and allow what's slowly seeping into the ladle now and I'm moving it around the edge is pure chicken fat so I just go around the edge and then I will discard this in the little bowl hiding behind so I'll leave this to cool down because it's too hot I'll put it in a plastic bowl, cover it with cling film, leave it in the fridge till tomorrow similarly with the chicken and you know that's a hell of a head start for tomorrow's dinner. Um, the, other th the other ingredient in the chicken pies tomorrow is carrots um, and I've only used half the carrots that were cooked with the chicken and these are going to be taken out. In fact I'll put them on the plate with the cooked chicken. They're quite big but tomorrow, I'm not going to worry about it tonight, I will slice those up and they will be part of the chicken pie. 
I think in my recipe I suggested eight carrots and I only cooked six today because that's all I had in my fridge. But obviously you can see the more carrots you cook, which are quite cheap really, relatively, um, the more carrots you cook, the more carrots you're gonna have to serve with your poached chicken and, and also subsequently in your pie the next day. If you want it to be really, really good with uh, an economic look, I'll show you. This is the bulb of garlic that I cooked with the chicken. Okay, and if you squeeze it ever so gently, these are the little cloves of garlic. There's nothing wrong with them at all. They've been slowly, slowly, slowly cooked. They're not pungent like fresh garlic at all. But being a member of the onion family, they've softened and they'll be a little bit sweet. Still a little bit hot. That's why I look like I'm handling it very carefully. So I wait till it goes completely cold. And because most people are working on Monday and you want things to be, um, you know, quite easy after work, all we're going to have to do is make the sauce and the pasties up, which should only take five or ten minutes. See you tomorrow.